is designated an area of outstanding natural beauty, which every year attracts nearly a million visitors. They come to walk, picnic, look at the wildlife, and just enjoy the countryside. But there's another side to the chase. For nearly a hundred years, coal has been mined from under these hills, leaving behind a vast network of mine workings. As a result, just occasionally, the land can become unstable. Holes can open up in the ground, particularly if there's been heavy rain. There's no risk if you stick to the footpaths, but if you wander off the paths through the vegetation on the hillside, then there is just a danger that you might be swallowed up by the earth. During the reconstruction you're about to see, we've used actors to play the parts of the families involved, but the rescuers all agreed to play themselves, to show in more detail than ever before exactly what happened. Gavin? I can't see Gavin! A sunny Sunday in April. Barry Bolton was taking his children out for the morning. With them was a family friend, Gavin Hall, and his mother, Dawn. No, Leslie's sitting in the front. You sit in the back with Christopher and Mark. Are you warm enough? OK, lunch will be on the table at one, Barry. OK, I'll wear them out. They'll be ready for it. Probably have to ask on Cabrera. Okay, don't be late. And look after Gavin and Christopher, they're only little. Okay. See you later, Dawn. Cheers. Hansel and uh, Bye, darling. Barry you be good. Bye. Very good friends of mine. We've been friends for uh, quite a few years. We were actually staying there for dinner. So while um, me and Hazel were preparing the dinner, uh, Barry took the children off for a few hours. They went to the Seven Springs area of Cannock Chase. The children were happy to be out after two days of continuous rain. Have I done enough here? Yeah, I could do a few more if you like. Hazel and Dawn were just pleased to have the house to themselves. Hey, on your head! Right, come on you lot. Let's do some serious training up on the hill. I thought, right. I just really tired of these little devils out. And I got them to run down this big hill. Um, it's a place where um, the local football team do a bit of their stamina training. Um. Right. I want each of you to run to the top and wait for me there. Off you go, Lizzie. Now you, off you go. Right, now you, Gavin. Off you go. Gavin? Gavin? I can't see Gavin! Is he up there? No! We can't see him! Well, come down here, both of you, and keep an eye out for him. I sent the kids back down towards me, sent the dog off in front of me to see if he could find Gavin, and then the dog started barking and making a fuss near some bracken. Come on, Smokey. Come here. Come here, will you? The dog was, uh, actually thought he'd been sent on for flushing game up because he was barking into the bracken sort of thing, and I thought, you stupid dog, you're supposed to be looking for Gavin. Gavin? Where are you? You're down there, Gavin. I can't see you. Can you wave your arm? I'm stuck. Get me out. He started waving his hands and I caught a glimpse of his fingers, the end of his fingertips, in the light. And I said, OK, Gavin, stay where you are. Don't panic. We'll get you out in a minute. Leslie. Run down to the road and get help as quickly as you can. Get to the station at Milford Common. Thumb a lift if you have to. Wesley, run down to the car. In the boat, you'll find a tow rope. Get it as quick as you can. Hang on, Gavin. 
We'll get you out! We've got a five-year-old lad who's fallen down a hole that's opened up. But Barry couldn't do it on his own. It was all happening in an isolated spot. But all the rescue services, fire, police and ambulance, managed to get there within a few minutes. Uh, tell her not to worry and inform of the situation, please. Tango Alpha 480. One of the first to arrive was leading fireman Bernard Gidman. What's his name? Gavin. Gavin! Gavin, can you hear me? How long's he been down there? About half an hour. How big is he? Oh, he's only little, skinny little kid. He's, he's only five. Well, what's the size of that hole, Bernard? Yeah. Gavin! Gavin! We're going to have to do something. The sides of the hole are collapsing. Right. If you two go down... Give me a line. two airbags from down the bottom. We're going to go in the hole. Sheets up with you. We're going to go in the hole and hold the sides back. There wasn't really an alternative at the time because something had got to be done because um, if it hadn't have been done, Steady. the hole would have collapsed Steady. and um, he, he would have suffocated. And having seen what we saw right. later on into the rescue, okay. it became apparent that what happened then did go some way to stabilising the situation. Within minutes, Bernard was replaced by airbags which stopped any more earth falling onto Gavin. We've had a look a little bit farther down by digging another hole. Clearly we couldn't dig down uh, directly above him because we would really have caused him a major problem. So by digging um, just slightly downhill from where he was, um, very quickly the ground fell away and then revealed that there was actually a fissure and he was trapped in a fissure rather than a hole. So from that point on it was clear that we had to go down some way away from him and then try and tunnel in towards him. Meet's nearly ready. Hope they won't be too long. Well, it's nearly one o'clock. You don't think something's happened, do you? Oh, don't worry. They probably stopped for something. But I'd better turn the oven down. Hazel? There's a police car just arrived. It took time to get vital equipment and materials up the hill, and time was precious. By now, Gavin had been underground for over three hours, and there was a danger of hypothermia. Coming down quiet, please. They lowered a microphone and a light to monitor his condition. At the same time, two firemen and a miner from the mine's rescue team began to tunnel through the crack towards Gavin. The three chaps who were involved were in a lot of danger. We had a line on them. Um, but at the end of the day, had there been a collapse of the topsoil, I don't think we'd have been able to get them out before they suffocated. The other problem, of course, was the fissure went down as far as we could see. So had they fallen in um, into one of the wider parts, we would have never got them back. I can see him, Bernard. I can see him. Right. He's covered in soil. He was 20-odd uh, feet down the hole, very tightly wedged, with his feet dangling in, uh, in space. There was nothing beneath him. So he was in the most uh, unbelievably dangerous situation. No one knew how deep the crevice was beneath Gavin, but it was clear that the only thing stopping him falling further was his head that had become tightly jammed. What we need to do, we need to get something to get this soil off him, Bernard. We get a couple of chimney rods. Yeah. Gavin, can you hear us at all? Yes. The dirt was actually uh, impeding his breathing, and, and you could hear that on the microphone that we had lowered down the hall, that his breathing wasn't that good. And uh, the sooner we got the dirt away from around his mouth and nose, the better condition he'd be in. And perhaps one more as well. One. We'll extend it yeah, down here. I scraped carefully from above his head until I could see his hair sticking through at the top and then stopped scraping so it didn't hurt him in any way. When I'd done that, I had to then ask for something else to clean the rest of the dirt from around his face and it was decided to use a vacuum cleaner. Right, thank you. Cable. Cable. <laughs> right, Gavin. We're just going to try and get some of this dirt off around your face. Don't worry about the noise, okay? 
Right, power on then. I cleared it uh, away from his eyes very gently without uh, Hoover getting too close to him. And I went down to his mouth and uh, the soil dropped away from him and I saw his face. Gavin, Gavin, you can open your eyes now. Are you all right? What's happening? Have you got any news? No, not at the moment. As soon as I hear anything, I'll let you know. Can't we go up to Seven Springs? I want to be there. I think it's best if you don't at the moment. When Gavin's brought out of the hall, he'll be taken straight to hospital. And we're nearer the hospital here than we would be at the scene. Right. I felt as if I wasn't knowing it enough and uh, that I wanted to go up to um, Cannock Chase myself. And I did actually say to the police, if you don't take me up there, I'll um, get a taxi and go up there myself. Open your eyes! Open your eyes! On one occasion, I can remember, he did look like he was falling asleep. The risks, if he had gone unconscious, um, his tongue could have fallen down the back of his throat and actually suffocated him. So it was um, very imperative that we kept him awake, kept him conscious. Gavin, open your bloody eyes! It was very, very tense, and particularly knowing that Gavin, as the time went on, was sinking a little bit, and uh, it was quite clear that time was running out. Hello, you, Gavin's mum. Yes. Have they got him out yet? He's still stuck down the hole. It's going to take. Some I did want to get out of the police car and just run up to where Gavin was. But I, I didn't want to interfere with what the Mines Rescue and the firemen were doing, actually doing. And so I did just um, stay in the police car. I did do what they asked me to, although it was very hard. In my experience, had, had the mother come, she would have been stressed hearing Gavin in the state that he was in. And I think had she then spoken to Gavin, I suspect he would have got more stressed as well, so uh, we didn't generally think it would have been a good idea. The emergency services chiselled their way inch by inch towards Gavin. He'd now been trapped for more than six hours. Right, we can touch him now. We can actually touch him. Hey, Gavin. Gavin, how are you? Okay, your arm's stuck up your back, isn't it? Yeah. Well, listen, I'm going to get your arm from up your back. If it hurts, you just scream out, okay, shout. What I had to do was uh, release the arm very gently because I wasn't sure whether it was broken or the shoulder was dislocated or what, and try and get a line tied to it so that we had him, if, any, if he slipped further, we had him by this line. It's tight, isn't it? You got it. Right. Okay, there's still Bernard, yeah. I want a piece of rope to tie to his wrist. Okay. Okay. Hang on. Come in over your right shoulder. Okay. There you go. I'm going to tie this around your wrist, Gavin. If it hurts you, tell us if it's too tight. Okay. Not me long, we'll have you out. Yeah. Don't, okay. don't pull any harder than that. Okay. Right, do you want the drink, Gavin? Are you thirsty? Yes. Just a second. Can we get some water down, room? Can he have a drink? Just wet his lips. Just, just wet, wet his, his lips, lips if you can. can. Can you fill it with some water, then? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mate. Oh, just wet his lips, nothing else. Okay. Okay. Just wet your lips, don't swallow anything. Good lad. That'll feel better. Yes. Once he'd had a drink and uh, Bernard uh, behind me, uh, we decided between us that we'd give him a pull and see if we could get him, get him out. The only part of his body we could get hold of was his, his arm, so I uh, got hold of him by his upper arm and tried a couple of yanks. Right. At this point, I was a bit concerned again. I'm used to men, not boys, and I said to Bernard, um, you have a go, because he's a child, you've probably dealt with more children than I have. You won't be long now. Just gotta have a good pull at you, see if I can get you out. All right. 
Oh, no. No, Mick, it's his head. I couldn't move him at all. I just sort of jarred at him, and it was quite obvious that, uh, that his head wasn't going to come free. In fact, I was quite concerned at that point that he may have had a fractured skull. Not looking good. At one stage, I did actually hear, overhear two people saying that he did look a, li a little bit bleak, um, which I got quite upset about, and I thought, I'm going to lose him. He's, he's going to die. Yeah. He's tight. He's that, he's that tight. He's pushing the side of his face in. And all the way yeah, down his face. body is tight. You're going to have to chisel him out. Literally chisel him out. Yeah. 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 While I was actually crawling towards Gavin, my thoughts were, he's mine. This time, he's coming. I was going to go down there. I was going to get him free. I'm just going to chisel him in the back of your head, Gavin. You'll be all right. As I chisel around the back of his head, I just gave him a little tug from underneath his arm, and he actually moved. And the sensation then was tremendous. He's free! <laughs> I'm passing him! I, I threw the zip gun down and positioned myself so I could get both arms on him and pulled with both arms and it was, he just came out sweet as a pie. Like spreading butter in the summer. We'd heard uh, Pete shout that he'd got him free and then all of a sudden, um, almost unexpectedly, out he pops. And there's a, there's a great um, shout from everybody that was watching and the most absolute, unbelievable uh, elation. When I first saw Gavin, I went um, up to him and gave him a hug, told him I loved him. And um, I was crying and my mum was crying. Um, I was just... Um, Happy that he was, he was alive. If you can appreciate that it, um, it took a long time, and um, um, emotions build up on you over that sort of period of time. So I went away on my own, and um, I just had a few minutes on my own down the uh, backside. I think it was about two days later and it was an occasion I was actually working outside underneath a car and my wife came out and, and read an article out of a national newspaper and up until then um, I'd actually been capable of holding my emotions back and my wife was standing above the car and she read the article out, Heroes Rescue Gavin and I just couldn't come out from under the car. I just burst into tears. A boy of five was saved by his ears yesterday when he glimpsed. Gavin is now 12 years old and remembers very little of the day he was trapped underground. What memories he does have come from his treasured collection of press cuttings. I can remember of the day when um, I heard Barry's dog and he went back to the car to fetch some rape. I, can't rem I couldn't remember anything after Damn that. Gavin. After a while, I could see flashing blue lights. They took me into an ambulance and took me to hospital. College. College. It brought me and Gavin a lot closer together, although we were all already close because he was my only child. Uh, Gavin seemed to come through it quite well and after he recovered they made a, a, they checked him out, made an assessment of him and they said he was perfectly fine, he was great. When I came out of hospital 
the firemen invited me <coughs> to the fire station and then they gave me a fireman hat and the mine rescuers gave me. Sound familiar to you? 